And have faith. The kingdom of God has come. Arise with the power of God to take you on the eagle's wings, far above all powers, to a place of rest from toys and setbacks. Arise from the dunghill and sit on the throne, for the blood of Jesus Christ has but for you. And the circle of life. Welcome to today's episode, Arise Christ Eaglet. I am Uneku Ojo Achille. We we'll begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You Lord, you open my lips and my tongue. We announce your praise. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We bless your name. We exalt you, King of Kings for giving us this platform and this opportunity to hear your word and to be blessed by it. We pray, Heavenly Father, that may you speak to our spirits, speak to our situation, speak to our life, that whatever it is that holds us bound to stand up and take our position in the place of life, that, Father, may you remove that from our circle of influence and cause us to move forward and achieve purpose through your most holy name, Jesus. Amen. My topic for today is Lions arising. Lions arising. Out there in the city of Germany, at the Lutheran Church of St. Brunswick Cathedral, stands the sculpture of a great lion as a reminder of Henry the Lion, a member of the wealth dynasty and the Duke of Sassoni. Henry reigned and ruled over a vast territory. He achieved great power in part by his political and military acumen and also by the ancestral links he enjoyed to his fourth grandparents. He is symbolized with a lion because of his courage and the strength of will. The lion has been an important symbol for thousands of years and now appears as a theme in cultures around across Europe, Asia, and Africa. Despite the recorded incidents of attacks on human, on human beings, lions have been seen and referenced, especially in Africa, as a symbol of courage, of greatness, and of kingship. You come to many African countries, rural, rural areas, where you have the kings of these areas. Most of them have against their throne the face of a lion, or the clothing of a lion, or the dressing of a lion, or the painting of a lion to symbolize the strength of their courage and the strength of their will. The lion is a very strong animal and appears at the same time as a very, very gentle animal. The most consistent depiction about a lion is in keeping their image as the image of the king of the beast. So whoever is associated with the lion symbol or the lion tattoo is being reminded of a kingship, of, the, of a kingdom, of a dynasty. The lion is seen and used by great nations and empires as a symbol of royalty a symbol of stateliness, a symbol of bravery. Even in the kingdom of heaven, Jesus is being likened to the lion of the tribe of Judah. Revelation 5, verse 5. What are the attributes of the lions that make people reference them so much, that make people want to be associated with the lion? we we'll start with the lion's fight. Among the animals, the lion will win award for a relentless fighter. 
it does not turn back for any. As we see in the book of Proverbs 30, the lion does not turn back for any person on the day of battle. It goes head on. It does not run back or turn back and say it's defeated in the day of battle. It keeps going on, keeps going on, and keeps fighting. The lion is the king of the beasts because of it, it is fierce and it is very strong and it is very, very courageous. It goes and even attacks a buffalo. It goes and attacks even a buffalo. It attacks, tries all its strength, or it is exhausted. That is the lion for you. It is powerful, both body and spirit. With its long mane around the head and the neck of the lion, this gives the, the male lion a kingly figure and a stately appearance. By the way the lion moves, the strides it takes, it moves with so much stateliness. One will ask what makes the lion attack a crocodile. Courage. Courage. What makes a lion attack a buffalo? Courage. Courage. What makes a lion attack a bull? Courage. The book of Revelation 5, verse 6 to 7 reveals that Jesus stood up and missed the cries of pain to break the seven satanic seals and to redeem his people. Like a lion, he did that. He fought, he defended his pride, and he kept, he kept his enemies aback. Till to today, he's been referred to as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Till to today, also, Israel is being referred to according to the book of Numbers 23. Israel is still referred to as a lion, a lion that watches, that couches, and stands up to face its prey. The second one is the lion's appearance. Though the lion has its limitations, its appearance and strides makes it to be more celebrated among a lot of people. The lion has huge manes and majestic appearance. The rising of the lion is something quite terrific. And it is something that is well captured in Numbers 23, verse 24. For a people like a lioness rising, poised like a lion to spring. Nor will he lie down till he has devoured his prey and drank the blood of the slain. Here scriptures referring to Israel as a lion referring to how it arises, how it stands up, poise, springs up with so much audacity to attack a slain. So once a lion rises up, what happens? The atmosphere changes. All the animals that know that they are prey of the lion take shelter. Once the lion rises, it rises with a rah when it's going for food. And when they hear this, all other animals that cannot stand it will take cover. So every creature that senses that the, that the lion is in place, even the human creatures, have to take position, an advantage position, to be able to escape being the feed for the lion. These are basic factors that show that the lion is arising. But what makes the lion rises? A lion rises to hunt for his prey. A lion rises to marshal the pride, yes. When the other, the lions are inside, the baby lions, the cubs, you see the lion marshalling the pride. The pride is where the lion live. It marshals, it go around to check if there's danger or if the people, the, the children of the family are secured. That is what the lion does for its own. 
So what uh, it also does uh, that to keep all its enemies about when the lion rises is maybe probably to defend the pride. Also, we see that the lion arises sometimes to gather strength, to take a walk, to move around with its young one, to walk them, and also to walk alongside the lioness. We'll continue after this short break. And take your place in the circle of life. The lion is one of the largest, strongest, and most powerful animal in the cat family, and also one of the most dreaded and feared by other animals and humans. This then comes with no surprise that the lion has since time immemorial referred to as the king of the jungle. The lion is very confident, majestic, and proud. These qualities can be seen at a glance when the lion walks around. Lions are never in a haste in whatever they do. Much of their time is spent resting and are inactive for about 20 hours of a day, although lions can be active at any time. Intermittent burst of activity follows through the night hours until dawn, when hunting most often takes place. They spend an average of two hours a day walking and about 50 minutes eating. A community of lions is called a pride consisting of an average of 15 to 25 lions and in most cases with only one male lion and multiple females or lionesses and their cubs. While female lions do most of the hunting because they are smaller and faster, the male lions perform the function of protecting the pride from intruders although the male lions also hunt sometimes. Lions feed only on flesh supplied by the prey they hunt which mainly consists of smaller animals like antelopes, zebras, buffaloes, and so on. Unlike other animals in the wild, lions don't look over their shoulders when they feed. They are so confident that they are not threatened by other animals. Lions are admired world over because of their beauty and elegance and represent a variety of symbols for most cultures and races. The lion symbolizes strength courage, authority, power, leadership, royalty, the list goes on and on. Worthy of note, however, is the fact that there are other animals that are bigger than the lion in the jungle. For instance, the elephant, the hippopotamus, or even the tiger are all bigger in size, but none of these are referred to as king of the jungle. But the lion bears this title because of its fearlessness its courage, its pride, and its dominion and power over the others. So to stand out in whatever you do, you have to awaken all these qualities just like the lion and stand out from the rest of the crowd. And take your place in the circle of life. Welcome back. Way back in 1955, a lioness arose in the shores of America. She arose to save the world from racism. She arose to save the blacks. Seated there in a public bus in Alabama, Rosa Parks was asked by the bus driver to give up her seat she being black to give up her seat for a white boy to sit down. She said no, and she stood by it. Irrespective of the force that the driver and the conductor tried to apply. Irrespective of what everybody said, that because she was a black, she has no right to sit when a black, white boy is sitting. Rosa Park refused to give up her seat. This was immediately recorded by the then America as a civil disobedience, and she was arrested for not giving up her seat. Now at that time in America, the blacks were made to feel inferior to the whites, 
even though all of them were Americans. This segregation was so obvious that the blacks were asked to enter the bus from the back door while the whites will enter from the front door. And whosoever black is sitting, even if the, the, the white people, the seats are remaining and then the blacks have no seats, they need to stand throughout the trip. Irrespective that they are leftover seats in front where the white people. But at this point, Rosa Park was sitting where she was supposed to sit and there was an overflow and she was asked to stand up and give up her seat that a white boy will sit. And she said, no, I won't. She was arrested and was locked up. These arrests that happened in December 1955 gave rise to the civil rights movement, drawing activists like Martin Luther King into the show. That was what gave prominence to Martin Luther King Jr. He stood up and he began to fight for this girl. He stood up and began to fight for the blacks. That was what activated Martin Luther King. He saw it. If this small girl can do this, why can't we? Him then as a preacher, why can't we stand up and fight for the rights of the blacks? He remembered then that his four little children also were being segregated and cast aside from the society, ostracized, not because they were not good enough for the society, but because they were blacks. And so he received the energy and began to fight. Evander Holyfield once said, it is not the size of a man, but the size of his heart that matters. Some men are quite small, but their heart is very large, like the big heart we have in Edo State. The Eagles of Christ, the kingdom of God will never be advanced unless Christians become as courageous as the lion of the tribe of Judah. God delights when a shepherd boy like David, that has the heart of a full-grown man, the heart of a lion, with so much bravery, marches towards Goliath and topple him down. Because what? He knows his God. When Rosa Parks sat there, she knew her right. When she sat there, she knew that somebody wanted to make her feel less than what her creator wanted her to be. Rosa stood up and she fought for the black race. Today, she's been remembered for that singular act. And one of her popular quotes, which I love so much, she said, that the oak tree that becomes, the oak seed becomes an oak tree, I'll get it later, when it's what, it stands its ground. Once you plant it, it stands its ground there, it does not move, holds onto itself. You see that small seed becoming a gigantic oak tree. Because what? You decided to do what? To stand its ground. So that little girl stood her ground and she fought for the black race. Today, there is less of that discrimination in America, even though it's still very, very evident. I heard recently in the music world where two of the great musicians stood against the concert that is being organized where awards are given to people. All these people act. A lot of black people are in the entertainment industry. Talk about California, talk about black people. But today, who do they give the award? They give it to the whites. But these are the people making the money for the Hollywood, the blacks. And then they don't recognize them. So this year, they cut it short. We ain't going there. And let's see how that will go. Maybe there will be a change after that. Somebody needs to say no to a system where things are going wrong. If we don't say no, we keep on taking what, we'll do what, we'll not advance us. As a people, we'll not advance us. The, the way Christianity is being practiced right now in the world, the way Christianity is practiced, especially in this country, they believe that because you are a Christian, you should be deaf and dumb. Because you are a Christian, you should become, you should take everything. But you know what? 
The only system in the world that can take everything is a waste bin. Check it out. Whatever you throw into it, it collects it because what? It's a waste bin and it's a trash. When you begin to take everything that comes your way, you are morally a waste bin. And that is what you are, a trash. Anybody can come in, anybody can go out. Because what? You can tolerate. You have the capacity to tolerate everything. But even in these days, there are some waste bin. <laughs> That when you go there, they say what? Cans only. And some say re only recyclable materials. Why can't you even select some things? Even if you are a waste bin. You should try and improve. Dear friend in Christ, the Turkish people say, a lion sleeps in the heart of every brave man. Is there a lion sleeping in your heart? Then you need to wake it up. The lion of the tribe of Judah, who redeems. Scripture say. He is the lion that redeems, the lion of the tribe of Judah. But also we have another kind of lion, the roaring lion, the one that comes to devour, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That one is Satan himself, the lion that is moving around looking for whom to devour. I believe at the end of this sermon, someone who awakened the right lion that is in that person. If you are that person, then you need courage to do so. Courage to arise and embrace strength. To cast off mediocrity. To cast off fear. Yes. To cast off fear. Because that is basically the most, the, the greatest obstacle against lions. Fear. Rosa Parks would have been here among other black. Please stand up before police will come. Stand up, stand up, stand up. We don't want problem. We want to go home now. But you can't say because she wants to go home today. A system that has been enslaving people generation after generation will continue to be in place. For that singular act, she didn't fight. She didn't take a gun, but she did what? She stood her ground. I am sitting here. You don't have... Let him wait for the next boss. Even though she was arrested, she wasn't able to be persecuted. Because what? She was right. So you are not going to fight foolishly or fight using weapons. But you are going to hold your ground against injustice. Or else you are a trash can, taking everything for fear of what? Tomorrow. No. So we need also the same courage to serve God and do what is good and noble. We need courage to preserve justice, to pursue freedom. Yes, we need courage to pursue freedom. To face oppression, you need courage. To put an end to sabotage, you need courage. To put an end to intimidation, you need courage. To put an end to wasteful living, you need courage. One needs courage to accept change and to do the will of God. Because God is always calling people to do the things that have never been done before. Things that they cannot imagine, but God calls them to do it. In the beginning, it may seem impossible, but for you to be able to achieve that, you need a bit of courage. Yes, the same way he called a virgin and told her without any human intervention that she would become a mother of the Savior of the world. She needed courage to accept that and she needed courage to stand even when the world was persecuting her that she was pregnant without a husband. It takes courage to do that. Also, we read in the book of Luke 8, 43 to 48, of the woman that had the issue of blood. Scripture says she arose against all odds, against the rebuke of the people, against the pushing of the crowd. She arose, she pushed forward. They were pushing her backward. She was pushing forward. They were pushing her backward. They were rebuking her, but she was going forward, set upon her target. If only I can touch the hem of his garment, I know that I'll be well. She focused on that, and she reached there. She touched him, and she was well. He even came around again and gave her more blessings. For what? That which she had was courage. Dear friend in Christ, unless you have the heart of a lion, like this woman, 
you will lose heart when you need to move forward. Unless you have the focus of a lion when it goes for its prey. You see that your situation as its prey and you calculatively go for it, pounce on it, pick it up and solve it. Unless that, you cannot prevail. There is something also quite significant about the lion. Lions do not wait for applause from other animals in order to do their attacks. Lions are not the group that wait for people to say, yeah, go, go, go. Lion goes even before the applause comes. It stands even against rebuke. It stands. And that is what you know a lion. It does not wait for every situation to be perfect before it moves on. It does not wait for the approval of men before it goes. We see men like Bill Gates, Nelson Mandela, and even our own Aliko Dangote, who like lions move without waiting for people to tell them to move. They go ahead and do that which their heart has instructed them to do. These are people who promote principles and not personalities. So when you are there to promote a principle, when you are there to promote a system, you are working there as a lion. Not there to advertise yourself or to, 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 to promote your personality. If you do that, then you are working as a politician, not as a lion. Lions are basically people that fight for the rights of their people. They are not people who are self-promoters who work to promote themselves. But they are like lions that walk through the savannah with quiet dignity and calm majesty. And as they do their walking, they walk their doing. They do their walking, they walk their doing. So whatever they do, they walk. Whatever they walk, they do. Lions do not need to hold a press conference to inform tigers and kangaroos that they are the king of the beasts. No. They do not need to introduce themselves to every beast who they meet. All they need to do is to act like lions. They are roaring to introduce them to the deers of the forest. When the lion arouses and speaks and rows, every other animal knows the sound of the lion. The people who model the lion, they are courageous people. People like Jesus who raised the dead but never published it in the national dailies of Israel. But rather he said to the people, go and tell no one about it. He was not trying to promote his personality, but he was there to do the work of his father. Only insecure people have to boast and belittle others in order to beat their own chest. Lions who know their work, do not boast about their work, do not belittle others, and do not make others insignificant for them to be able to promote themselves. Only insecure people do that. The biblical Daniel had the heart of a lion. Living in a spiritually hostile environment, he did not compromise his faith, but he stood out for what he believed in. Most Christians today live in a world of spiritual hostility, where there is great temptation to compromise their faith, where there is great temptation to deny like Peter who denied Jesus. I do not know him. Are you with him? I do not. There are situations they come into and they deny Christianity. There is also a great um, temptation of compromise of faith. When you come in, everybody is doing this. Why should you be doing differently? Everybody's wearing this. Why should you wear differently? There's also that temptation. In most parts of the world today, people who stand up for Christ do not stand up for him in the face of temptation. Some fear that they'll be ostracized, which is possible. Some fear that they'll be ridiculed. Some fear that they'll be scorned. Some fear that they'll be passed over. Some even fear that they'll be imprisoned or killed for the name of Jesus Christ. But the Catholic Church continues to encourage us to stand up for our faith. We see that in the evangelist Mark, who authored the second gospel according to Mark. He is symbolized as a winged lion, a winged lion. Because he was a very, very courageous man. 
We see this in his writings where he started the gospel with the beheading of John the Baptist. That is the worst that will happen among the disciples. Well, he started with that. Somebody reading that gospel of Luke will say, God, if this is what is out for disciples, then I'm out of it. But that is how he started the gospel. The beheading of John the Baptist by a tyrant king. He started it saying, what is the worst that could happen? Then he arose immediately, picked up his pen, and he said, Jesus went into the desert after that. So if this Christianity now is about beheading and about desert life, what is there in it for me? That is the gospel of Mark. But the church refers to him today as a liar. Talking about lions that have passed and lions that still live. I want to go back to the beginning of the lions today. The lioness that most lions have model, Rosa Parks. Her quote I said earlier, she said, Today's mighty oak was yesterday's little knot that stood its ground. Today's mighty oak was yesterday's little knot that stood its ground. Meaning you cannot achieve anything in life if you do not stand for something. As the school of thought once said, if you cannot stand for something, you can fall for anything. While Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, if a man has not discovered something that he will die for, he is not fit to live. The biblical Daniel discovered that he was willing to die for. He said he was willing to die for God. And he stood, it almost cost him his life. He was thrown into the lion's den as a test of his faith. Even down there in the lion's pit, he stayed there praising God until God shut the mouth of lions. We also have David put on an armor as provided by the king, but put on the armor of God's word, irrespective of the size of Goliath, irrespective of the panic in Israel, irrespective of the fear all over, David marched towards Goliath and challenged him. This is what courage is all about. It is about doing the right thing, doing the truth, and doing it with God on your side. Despite the opposition, the enemy will go down, but the people of God will stand firm. There are challenges. There are Christians who change church to church. People who visit from one place to another, from one shrine to one temple, all in the name of change. These people believe that where they are, God cannot reach them. But when they move place, when they move church, when they change direction, they are there. They can find help. These people are not courageous people. A Christian should expect God to meet him wherever he is when he has faith. And a Christian should not expect a life free of opposition or challenges. God did not promise you that. He did not redeem you to cage you, but he redeemed you to send you out. And he said, go. Walk among scorpions, among snakes, but they cannot harm you, but you are going to walk among them. So he did not promise you that you are going to walk on the street of gold. No, it's not written. But he said what? Go and make disciples of na nations. Even when you drink of deadly poison, because they are going to poison you to want to kill you. Even if you drink it, even when you walk upon snakes and scorpions, nothing shall by any means hurt you. What he promised you is that Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Praise the Lord. Chosen Iglesias of Christ, as I speak to you today, what will you stand up for? There are many circumstances in life today in this country, Nigeria, where people need to stand up for something. Even in your own nation, you listening to me by TV. What do you need to stand up for? In your family, what do you need to stand up for? Is there a trend that has been from generation unto generation? 
Recently, I met a boy that I interviewed. He said his father died of diabetes. His uncle died of diabetes. So he's preparing that when he's old, he'll die of diabetes. Why can't you stand up and say no to that trend? Say no to it and stand by it. It to stop. They will say, it used to be like this until somebody needs to say no. Enough is enough. I met a lady that got married and she said, yes, my mother got married nine years. She didn't get babies until my sister is like that in our family. I say, it is a lie. Somebody has written it like that. Stand up and wipe away that handwriting of Satan that is written, but is contrary. You don't have to say it has been like that, no. And that is what is killing this country. Yes, it has been like that from government to government. People need to stand up and say, no, it can no longer be like that. And when we stand up like that as a people, we say no to a system that is not advancing. They know we supersede anything that is written and has been the method that is contrary to the plan of God, that is contrary to the law of freedom and liberation. We need to stand up and say no to what is not of God. And when we come together as a people and say no to an injustice, to a system that is not right, that no will supersede the yes. But when some people are lying saying no, and some people are vultures, looking for waste to eat. How can the system go forward? That has been the problem. That has been the problem. But if Rosa, Rosa Park could stand and God could raise up a Martin Luther, pray that God should raise up a Martin Luther that will stand with you and see that the cause is brought to justice. Yes, if I talk about Martin Luther, it will be as if there have never been people in this nation who have stood for truth, who have fought for truth. If I say that, then I'll be wrong. Because we have great people like Kuderet Abiola, who stood for democracy in support of her husband, MKO Abiola. She stood, but it cost her her life. Should that now say we should not stand for democracy? or for justice. No. We have Chunua Achebe who stood for justice, truth, and governance. We have Odumegu Ojuku who stood for the liberation of his people. Though he never saw it in his time, but yet he still set aside a path for the people to follow. We have Queen Amina of Zaria who stood to defend her people. We have also Dora Akuili who stood up against counterfeit drugs. We also have Aliko Dangote, who stood up against importation. Yes. We have also Bishop Hassan Kuka, who stood up against violence and injustice. What will you stand up It would be unfair for me to finish this sermon without talking about Muhammad Buhari, who stood up for corruption. What will you stand up for? What will people know you? He stood up against corruption, not for corruption. What will people know you for? What will you stand up for or against? It takes courage to stand up out against a complacent crowd. The disciples stood out against the persecution of the Jews. And today we enjoy the gospel because some people put their life in line. Or else the gospel would have ended in Israel. The Jewish people were trying to kill the gospel. They told the soldiers to say that the body of Jesus was stolen by his disciples. They wanted to kill the message of resurrection. They said that the soldiers were sleeping. How can soldiers be sleeping? But when money is being passed from hands to hands, the soldiers agreed that they were sleeping. When the disciples came in and stole the body 
of Jesus. That means for them to carry the body of Jesus, that means it's not only Peter that came or Peter and John. They might have been like five disciples that would have been able to carry his body and take him all the way through Israel. Nobody saw them going in or coming out. If you say it, they say it was Sabbath. Everybody was indoor. Their friend in Christ. It takes courage to fight for truth. It takes courage to get your liberation. You may pay a price. You may pay a price. You may pay a price. Because hardly have anybody fought for liberation or courage without paying a price. But the beauty of it is this, and it's also the danger. You cannot get freedom without fighting for it. You cannot. It cannot be tossed on your lap. For that which you lack is already an advantage to somebody who is holding it bound and will not want to give it to you, even though it's your right. So even your right, you have to fight for it, or else it will not be given to you. If you say this is your right, you have to do what? Fight for it, because nobody will do what? Toss it upon your lap. As a Christian, should you face opposition, it is not the time to back out. For only cowards back out when they face opposition. Lions stand out and they stand against the norms of society that are not in line with justice. And they always and most times get victory, no matter how long. It is. Chosen Eglet of Christ, I charge you this day to arise like a lioness, to take up a courageous heart, and remember that courage is not the absence of fear. Yes, don't let anybody say, when you are courageous, you are not afraid. It's a lie. Courage is not the absence of fear, but rather, courage is the grace, the ability to postpone your fear until you have achieved that which your heart is set to achieve. That means, drop the fear first, go and achieve it, and then come back and see if the fear is still there. Postpone that fear, that thing that is making you afraid, and then move on. Even Rosa Park, when she sat on that seat, she would have been afraid. Supposing, 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 but she did what? She allowed the reason and the pain of that discrimination to outstand that fear. And that outlasted the fear. And today she's no more fighting. Dear friend in Christ, the world, as Jesus said to us, we have been sent like sheep among wolves. God has the power to remove the wolves, but he has not done that. Because what? He wants us like sheep among wolves all the time. So, being born in the kingdom where you are surrounded by wolves, how can you survive? You can survive only by doing what? Having faith, having courage, and believing that he who created you, who is your shepherd as a sheep, will be able to lead you to still waters and to green land. This will continue to seek and will continue to pray for and ask God to continue to carry us like sheep, even though we are vulnerable, and bring us to a place of peace and a place of success. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, grant me a change of heart today. Take away the heart of a coward and give me the heart of a courageous lion. May I arise this day and take my place in the circle of life. This is my humble prayer. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, the Father, in the whole unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And take your place in the circle of life. Welcome back. That's the much we can take on today's episode, Lions Arising. Lioness Arising. Yes, we need to arise for that which we believe on. And as we do that, let us always pray to God 
believing that he will be with us now and always. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God cause his face to shine upon you. May the good Lord be generous to you. May the good Lord grant you the heart of a lion. May you suddenly arise like a lion and take your place in the circle of life. May God grant you peace. Wings far above all powers To a place of rest From toys and setbacks Arise from the dung hill And sit on the throne For the blood of Jesus Christ Has but for you Arise and pull up the garment of sin Commanding your daybreak To break for the glory Arise, yeah, Christ Arise, yeah, Christ Awake to a new dawn and take your place in the circle of life.